So in this video, I want to show you what is my current AI setup? How do I use AI tools out there to do my job every single day? And more importantly, how I use AI, not about the tools, but the ways I use AI to help me achieve uh, productivity or produce better code, produce more code, okay? So the reason I'm, I'm trying to answer this is because this is one of the most common questions I get from the people who follow me. They always ask, what are the tools that you're currently using? Also, these tools are changing very, very rapidly. Like today, you have Cursor, tomorrow you have like a complete new IDE that's competing in the space, which is great. A lot of competition is great. But because of that, uh, let me just give you some ideas so maybe you can improve your setup. Now, before I even get uh talking about the tools. Let me tell you, I, I drew this in this piece of paper. Let me tell you how I personally use AI, okay? So I drew these two columns. It's very, very simple. So in the first one is AI as a copilot, and in the second column is me as a copilot. So what does this mean? Well, AI as a copilot is how I use AI to help me do my job. Like I am the pilot, AI is going to serve as a way to help me, right? The second one is the opposite, where I let AI be the pilot and I'm going to be the copilot. So I'm going to talk about that and what does that mean in my day to day. So in the first one here, in the first category, I would say probably 90% of the code that I put out there. 90% of the code that I deliver. This is actual code, not code that's just for experiments or POCs. This is code that's going to be running in production. It's going to be serving an economic purpose code that I'm getting paid off. 90% of all of that code is generated by me easily, probably more than that. Okay. So I like to do the design of the software that I, that I deliver. I do the architecture. I, all of the ideas, I probably come up with all of them. I decide when to write something and how to write it. And I use AI primarily to help me augment my ability to write that code. But what I mean by that is I put here augmented development. Think of autocomplete. So when I'm typing something, AI comes in and chimes in and says, well, maybe you wanted to say this and it's going to give me this fancy autocomplete. And I'm going to hit tap. I'm going to hit whatever key is in the tool. And that's going to fill that out. I don't have to type. So I'm going to get a faster typing experience in a way. Sometimes it's going to surprise me and it's going to add a little bit more code to what, you know, I don't have to finish my thought because AI is going to sort of like autocomplete it. So that for doing that, you get tools like Visual Studio Code or Cursor or Windsurf, all of those IDEs are great and they have great AI support to do this. Now, personally speaking, I'm using right now Visual Studio Code. After probably a year of using Cursor, I went back to Visual Studio Code because their co-pilot tool, uh, you know, a lot of progress. They've made a lot of progress there. I like Visual Studio Code more than Cursor because they are the leading IDE. They they do a lot of new features. I mean, they create, they deliver a lot of new features that are usually coming much later to Cursor. Sometimes those features are buggy because Cursor is focusing on something different. So I really, really enjoy being on Visual Studio Code, being on the latest version. And right now that Copilot is very, very good. I really don't miss Cursor that much. Cursor is great. If you're using Cursor, I think that's great. That's awesome. I have nothing against them. It's a matter of preference. I really like Visual Studio Code. So that's what I do here when I use AI to either autocomplete my, what I'm typing, uh, maybe just provide small snippets of code whenever I need to do something. Let's say I have a data frame. There's a lot of data inside. I have to sort it and filter it. And I do not remember how to do that. Well, I'm going to use AI to just complete that for me. Say, hey, I want to do this and that and that and that. And it's going to write a couple of lines of code, maybe two, three lines of code. Great. It's just easy for me to integrate those that code there. 
and move on. This is a better Stack Overflow for me. That's what it looks like. I would be asking that question before online, copying that solution, pasting it, modifying it, and move on. Now I'm getting a better experience, okay? So that will cover this. That is not the most important way I use AI, though. The most important way I use AI is in this second column, which for a better or for a lack of a better name, I called it the editor and the ideas type of machine for me. So what does that mean? Well, after I wrote all of my code and I have it there, I really, really like to take an AI agent and point it to my code and say, all right, find any mistakes in such and such files or in this function or give me all of the edge cases that are going to make this particular functionality break, or tell me how can I improve the readability of this particular file. So this is a separate agent. This is something that happens, for example, when I'm toast. I do not want to keep working on this feature because I, you know, I'm, it's, it's late already, but I can have an agent go and find ideas for me to improve my code base. That agent is not necessarily going to execute on those ideas. Sometimes if it's obvious what it has to do, I, I let it do it. But the fundamental principle here is to ask that agent to look over my shoulder and come up with things that I can improve, find mistakes, provide additional context to what I already created. And I think I get a ton of value out of this. Now, what am I using for this? Well, I'm using fundamentally two tools. Clap code is one of them and warp is the other one. The reason I'm using two is because unfortunately I love clap code, but I really don't like what they're doing behind the scenes. And it's, it's not transparent which models I'm using and their limits, and sometimes they cut my limits and it gets really, really dumb, the model. I just don't know what's happening. So I've started to use Warp. They, uh, you know, funny enough, they also use uh, Clat Sonnet right now, but it seems to be working very, very well. Warp is also the terminal that I use, so it's really nice to have both of them within a single application. So anyway, those are the two tools that I'm currently using. There are, other tools. Uh, you get Codex, which I have not tried yet. Some people are talking good things about Codex. You also get the Gemini CLI, which I have tried. I've decided to go with Clock Code uh, just because I have to center myself into one tool and try to learn it, not to be all over the place. But there are many, many uh, agentic platforms that are doing this very, very well. That's what I use for this. So now you get me most of the time when I'm writing code, I need an IDE like Visual Studio Code to help me do this. And whenever I'm toast, whenever I want a second opinion, whenever I want an agent looking for new ideas or for things that I can make better, I'm going to be using Club Code, one of those agents, the Warp agent, just looking over my code and proposing changes and ideas and whatnot. So that is mainly what I do with AI. Uh, for most of the code that I deliver out there, if not all of it. But there is a second section here, which is, I'm going to call it the vibe coding section, right? So this is me acting as the co-pilot. This is me basically prompting. That's it. This is me asking a model to do stuff for me and me not worrying about code. Now, this is my current state. I only use that mode for experiments for creating demos, for creating proof of concepts. That's the only mode uh, where, I mean, that's the only time uh, where I actually use that mode. So the funny thing is that most of my time goes into this. Like if, when I, you know, I sit down and I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm true to myself and I say, how much time do I actually spend in these activities? I realize that most of the time is for me experimenting. And, and less of it is just for me to actually write in code that, that matters, right? It's, and, and that sort of like makes sense because, you know, you should not be writing that much code anyway. Usually you should be testing your ideas, making sure you know the direction you're going and then summarizing that into actual code that you deliver. So let's say I want to uh, solve a, a particular problem. 
I do not know how to solve that problem. So I need to experiment. I need to try things out. I need to fail. I need to backtrack. I need to find different solutions. So for that, this mode is amazing. Now, what do I use for this mode? Well, here you can either use Copilot from Visual Studio Code. Their agent is capable of doing this. You can also use Clock Code or Warp. Uh, again, they have agents that can go and just go nuts and create code for you. You can also use Replit. I personally use Replit only when what I'm trying to create is visual. And this is me right now. It's not that Replit is good at that or bad at that. Uh, it's just that whenever I'm creating like a, like a website, a web page, and I really don't care about that code, I'm not going to be using it or reusing it or anything like that. I'm just going to go to Replit. I find their agent is amazing for that. If I care about the code, if after doing something, I'm going to be checking on the code and making sure it looks good and I can copy pieces from it and integrate them over here in the actual work part, uh, then I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code or Clock Code or Warp. So that is my second mode. Again, experimentation happens here. I let the agent go nuts. Real code delivery happens here. I, I, I go nuts. I let the agent help me. Uh, so far, I do not trust these agents to produce code that I'm going to sign with my name. It's fine if you're creating something and you're going to put it up there and it really doesn't matter uh, much, like the stakes are low. That's fine. You can just buy code your solution if that's what you choose to do and put it out there and, you know, nobody's the wiser. Uh, personally, when I'm getting paid to produce code, when I'm getting paid to just, uh, I don't know, do consulting for a company and I need to deliver something, I am not comfortable delivering AI generated slop. Uh, I have a lot of experience looking over AI code and it's actually not great. Not right now. Maybe it's going to be better in the future. Right now, anyone who knows how to code can look over AI generated code and will detect the sloppiness of these models. Will realize that there are decisions made by these models that they may work. They may function correctly but they are not maintainable. They are not something that a regular developer, a human being, professional developer will write. So that would mean, that would be my advice for those of you who are actually writing software. If you know how to write software, you can use these tools as an amazing, amazing way to augment what you're doing, but just be very, very careful, uh, letting them just take over because you are not going to become smarter because of it, and your code is going to become significantly worse because of it. So hopefully this makes sense. Again, if you're looking for just, just augment your, your, uh, your environment, Visual Studio Code is great. Cursor is also great. I just don't use it, but Cursor is also great. Windsurf, uh, I use it for a little while. I haven't for a long time. It was also a great option. I know some people call uh, talk about said. I have not used that. I, I, I can't recommend it just because I'm not familiar with it, but I do recommend Visual Studio Code. Copilot is very, very good. You don't have to go anywhere else. Copilot is just going to give you what you want. And then uh, Cloud Cut is amazing. Warp is amazing. Uh, I've heard good things about Codex and Gemini CLI. When I tried it, it was great. I, I just don't use it, but when I tried it, it was, it was amazing as well. So, this combination, you're never going to go wrong. Uh, I think my suggestion would be try to limit the number of tools that you use. Get very, very good at one of these tools or some of these tools. Um, don't worry that much about jumping uh, to different tools all the time because you're not going to master any tool and then you're just going to be all over the place. So hopefully this is helpful and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye-bye.